everyone and welcome back to the Bundesliga show brought to you by Over the Bar uh, with your hosts, myself, Rory Petrie uh, in England and Mark Bordhurst in Germany. Um, welcome back everyone. Um, we've had another very interesting and potentially decisive weekend in the Bundesliga uh, this weekend. Uh, lots of um, games that has uh, inclinations for, for the top end and indeed the bottom end of the league table. So myself and Mark will be going through it in a full show uh, as we're back back with it now. So we've got an anagram, got a hero in zero. So yeah, everything is everything is back this week. Um, before we do, of course, just a bit of usual admin. Obviously, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. The subscribers are starting to slowly go up for us on the channel, which is great. Um, so yeah, if you do like what you see, subscribe so you don't miss out on any shows, whether it's the Bundesliga show or the League One show. And just as a side note, if you haven't already seen it and enjoyed it, um, myself and Mark did actually a really nice one-off episode, uh, which came out over the weekend with the guys from the Two Bundesliga podcast. Um, so we sat down with Matthew and Ava to have a really nice chat about all things um, Spy Bundesliga uh, with regards to the title race and, and lots of interesting things about that league and uh, and a few other bits. So yeah, so do go check that out. It's on. It's obviously already on the YouTube channel. So have a look and let us know what you think of that. Um, we've already received some some nice comments already, so that's grand. So I hope you enjoy that if you haven't already seen it. Um, so anyway, on with the show and straight over to Mark for a, a brand new anagram, which he will announce and then we'll go into the usual bit. So yeah, Mark, over to you. Yeah, so let's have a look at, uh, so obviously if you guys remember, it was actually two weeks ago, the last show now. So yeah, so last time we announced the anagram from three weeks ago, but we didn't introduce a new one because we had so much to talk about that week. So yeah, so I'm just going to introduce uh, a one-off anagram. We're not going to re recap any previous results. So let's have a look. So Mark's mystery anagram for this week is, as you can see now on the bottom of your screen, it's bad man stooped. <laughs> yeah, pretty nice, <laughs> nice word this time, yeah. So that's the first word is bad man, B-A-D-M-A-N. And the second word is stooped. S T O O P E D. So remember, it has to be something related to the top tier. We're back to talking about the top tier of the Bundesliga this week. Yeah, it has to be to do with the top tier of the Bundesliga, either a player, a coach slash manager, or a club from the top tier of the Bundesliga. I think somebody's got it right for the last three or four weeks now. So yeah, I, I chose a difficult one this week, so maybe you guys won't be able to get it. But you never know. Maybe we have some Bundesliga geniuses out there who are going to get this one. Remember to comment on the YouTube channel and also to play along at home if you're listening on the podcast. So yeah, so that's enough for Mark's Mystery Anagram this week. So let's swiftly move on to the results for week 27. So let's have a look. As you can see at the bottom of your screen, there was no Friday game due to the internationals this week. So straight on to the Saturday afternoon. We had a 2-1 home win for Augsburg over Hoffenheim. We had another 2-1 home win for Leverkusen over Schalke. We had a 2-1 away win for Frankfurt in Dortmund in that top four clash. Then down to the bottom of the league, we had a one all draw between Mainz, Nordfumpf and Arminia Bielefeld. Then we had another win with a clean sheet for Wolfsburg with a 1-0 home win over FC Cologne. Then it was the big one, wasn't it, on Saturday evening. And once again, the big game goes with the Bayern. It was a 1-0 win for Bayern in Leipzig with a huge win there. Then uh, an entertaining game to finish Saturday off with a 2-1 home win for Gladbach over Freiburg in the battle for the Euro Europa League spots. And then on Sunday, we had a 1-0 win for, Verde, uh, for Stuttgart over Werder Bremen. And then as we speak, we're actually recording a little bit earlier again. Once again, Man United have a late kickoff on a Sunday. So <laughs> for about the 10th week in a row, I think. Yeah, right? yeah. I so at the moment, we have the Berlin derby ongoing, which will let you know the results at the end of the episode. So... Let's swiftly move uh, on into our analysis. So, again, we our OTB's featured fourth. 
So again, it's been a massive week. We build this one up in the prediction show to be a massive week of Bundesliga action. And I think there's no better place to start is uh, with probably the biggest of the big games this week. It was the title race decider, would you say? Maybe yes, maybe no, it remains to be seen. But it was Leipzig hosting FC Bayern Munich and it did end with an away win for Bayern in Leipzig. Yeah, I mean, for me, just watching this game, Rory, I was just like, how did Leipzig lose, really? You know, I mean, they did create a bag full of chances. We talked on the prediction show that it was time for Leipzig to step up and show what they're about. But for me, it wasn't really a problem with the performance level. It was just they missed too many chances, Rory. What did you think of that? Yeah, I agree. Um, It seemed to be a game where, generally speaking, RB did have a a good amount of control over the game um certainly started brightly without creating too many clear-cut chances i think sabitzer had a an okay effort which went a bit a bit high and wide um but yeah it's, it's just a lesson in in how to be clinical and and how to take your chances from from the from the champions um Obviously, so the goal comes um, on around 37 minutes, give or take, um, as things have died down a little bit. Lovely ball in behind from Kimmich for Muller to retrieve. Smart play again from from the from the German Muller cuts back and then finds his teammate rushing on to the ball, um, the ball back in in the form of Goretzka, uh, and it's a lovely finish. Curls it uh, perfectly inside the post with pace, no chance for Galacci. And that's 1-0. Um, and again, obviously, the the player, Goretzka, is, is someone that you, Mark, I think really like. And he he has become this all-court uh, midfielder as, as a term that's been thrown around a little bit. Uh, you have to be an all-court midfielder to play for Bayern. And he has added those goals to his game and is having a particularly impressive season. Um, but then RB did come out in the second half and I think... I mean, obviously, what I watched it live and then I watched the highlights again and there's literally chances on 47, 48, 51, 53 minutes for RB all in a row. Just, uh, yeah, they carved out chances and it was just that that bit of composure, like Nkunku, someone like Danny Olmo, like, who I really love as a player. And he, he fluffed his lines twice. Um so yeah, unfortunately, the the title race and game was obviously all kind of condensed into this one block of ninety minutes, and it just went to show that the champions just just showed their class, showed their clinicality, even without the best striker in the world, they were able to come out on top, and and that just shows the difference between the two teams right now. So uh, yeah, not the greatest of games or spectacles but there certainly were chances and it was certainly an interesting game regardless um and now yeah it looks like it's potentially Bayern's title to lose yeah I mean it's quite interesting because for me this was almost like an absolute role reversal it was like a kind of replica of the game uh, against Dortmund that FC Bayern had last year at almost the same stage of the season you know I mean I think there were four points clear going into that one and yeah. Yeah, they got the 1-0 away win, and this was almost the same. But I think for me, I just want to give praise to some of the Bayern players. I mean, for me, Thomas Muller has just been outstanding this season. I mean, how Jürgi Löw is still not picking him for Germany, I really don't know. I mean, the guy must be drunk as far as I'm concerned, because, I mean, he's just he's gone from being a goal machine earlier in his career to just an assist machine in the later years of his career. I mean, last year he broke the record. This year he's not going to be far off it. And I mean, as you say, that man Goretzka just gets better and better and better for me. He he could be the future of the German team, along with Joshua Kimmich. You know, I mean, those two play. For me, that's the spine of their side, along with Lewandowski now. I mean, it's Kimmich, it's um, Muller, still at the age of... He's still only 31. I mean, he's not an old guy, you know. <laughs> yeah, and then Goretzka as well. I mean, it's, it's no surprise to me that those three combined for the goal. I think as for Leipzig, I mean, I wouldn't say there was that much wrong with the performance. I mean, it wasn't a classic game that you might have been hoping for, but I mean, they did have control of a lot of the game. They created chances, but for me, the one, it's Danny Olmo, you know. I mean, he has been like their talisman, really, if you can say they have a talisman this season. To pull that effort wide on about 55, 60 minutes was just very, very disappointing for me. If they level there, then all of a sudden Bayern are starting to worry, you know, and all of a sudden they're the ones that are hanging on. 
But yeah, I mean, they got the win. You saw the celebrations from the Bayern players at the end of the game. They knew that that was the, for me and probably for them, the title wrapped up. I mean, Bayern still have tough challenges to come. They got Wolfsburg in two weeks away from home. So, I mean, that could also be a tricky one. So it's not quite 100% over, but I would say it's 85, 90% over now, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think, yeah, I mean, few would argue that Bayern probably deserved the title this year if they do go on to lift it. I think they have been the most consistent side. They've had a number of standout performers. I yep. would say aside from their defence, it's been another good season from Bayern ultimately. And we'll just have to see. They probably need another four wins, I would say now, maximum really, to, to wrap mm -hmm. up the title. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to see if they can do it. So, yeah, OK, over to the next game, which was, I mean, this was another massive game. This was a top four clash. It was four, fifth versus fourth before kickoff. And, yeah, it was Dortmund v Frankfurt. And, I mean, to be honest, this game went against what I predicted. I mean, I predicted that if this game was one all with 20 minutes to go, that Frankfurt would stick back. They would try to hold on for the draw. But it was the last 20 minutes that, that, that Frankfurt really started to take control of this game and kind of dominate, really. They created a lot of chances in that last 20 minutes. And eventually they got the goal, the winner. And it was that man again, wasn't it? It was Philip Kostic, who for me has been one of the players of the second half of the season in the Bundesliga with another really nice assist for Mr. Reliable Andre Silva to head home. And the celebrations again showed that Frankfurt knew that the Champions League now is theirs to lose, Rory. What do you make of that one? Yeah, it was a good game. Good game of football to watch. I think you could always guarantee that this one would have had plenty of chances and, and as a result, goals. Um, despite, I mean, I'm not saying that Frankfurt have a bad defence, actually. It's just the way that Dortmund go forward, of course. Um, I think first and foremost, before we go into the actual game, I think we have to give credit to Il Sanka. I thought he had a really good game up against the the unit that is Haaland. Um, I thought he, he marked him well. Obviously, Haaland still had chances. Um, it's hard to go 90 minutes without com completely pocketing him because, he, of course, he is such a natural talent. Uh, but he had a great game. Of course, he had the header that was ruled out just for offside as well. So I thought he had a really solid game, the Frankfurt defender. Um but yeah, in, in terms of the game itself, yeah, Kostic, yeah, I agree with you there, Mark. I think Kostic, since the turn of, uh, well, maybe since December-ish, I guess, he's been fantastic for the for the club. Um, it's almost like the the Sousa Kalidzic kind of combo when you've got Costa and sorry Kostic and Silva, they just connect on. You know, they just know where to be. Uh, Silva knows where to be. Uh, when Kostic picks up that ball, he knows when he's going to cross it and he knows he's always going to deliver. Uh, so the first goal is indicative of that because Kostic probably has the, he goes down the left, probably has the chance to either pull it back to someone else who's maybe in a better position, but he still digs out across and it's a bit of a loopy one, maybe not his best effort, but the fact that he's got the ball in there, it's in the danger, obviously in the danger zone. And then obviously Nico Schultz goes up for a header and completely completely naffs it up and gets it on the wrong side of his head uh, and then manages to perfectly loop it over the keeper as if he meant it. What a finish that was. Um, so, yeah, an, an early own goal to put Dortmund on the back foot. Um, but, yeah, they did. I think they did come back well in the game, in fairness, and um, started to create chances um, and obviously got an important goal just before half-time. Um, in the shape of Mats Hummels again, who I think has scored a, a very decent amount of goals actually this season. I, we, I know we both actually ripped into Hummels on a number of occasions early on in the season and he still obviously lacks a lot of things in terms of pace at the back and he does get caught out, but he has provided a lot of important goals actually for Dortmund. So it's another one for him, um, a good kind of swivel on the volley um, to get it back to 1-1. And as you said, just before when you're introducing this game, um, with 20 minutes to go, you would have thought it was Dortmund, you know, coming at them because they needed to to win the game. And it was an open game, but the, just the quality of football from the Frankfurt side on the break and on the counter, it was all, you know, all the main chances came from Frankfurt. Um, Kostic picked out Silva once again and he volleyed over. Um, there was a few other chances before, before ultimately they broke right at the end uh, on around 85 minutes to 
to deadly effect this time. Um, and again, you obviously you've really got to credit Kostic because Jovic goes through on into the box and it's actually a really good tackle from Hummels again, I think. Actually, it looks like the ball's going out for a corner. And again, if you Kostic, you could just settle and say, yeah, take the corner, take a few more minutes, like 30 seconds out of the game, get the big lads forward and we'll have a crack at them from set piece. But he didn't want to do that. He wanted to play the ball. He wanted to play live. He knew his... His striker, Silver, would be at that back stick. And so he loops up a lovely ball and back stick. Silver, bang, near post, goal 2-1. And that is, I mean, is that the goal that sends Frankfurt into the Champions League? Who knows? Um, but yeah, absolutely fair play to Kostic. I thought he was superb once again. Um, Silver's goal tally this season is incredible. Uh, such a brilliant return from, from the striker. He's really settled in. Uh, to this Frankfurt team and yeah what a performance in the end so it's looking good for Frankfurt and Dortmund have got a lot of thinking to do now I think. Yeah I think it's a really interesting point because should Haaland leave Dortmund which is looking increasingly lightly now I mean for me if they don't get top four which is looking very very unlikely barring the, the, the possibility that they could win the Champions League I mean we can't rule that out yet you know they are still in the quarterfinal with Man City to play next week. But I think, yeah, I mean, what better replacement potentially for Haaland than Andre Silva? You know, I mean, this could be another subplot of this game. For me, this is a, a guy who is just born to play Bundesliga, really. I think he's, he, he really suits the Bundesliga. He's very clinical. You know that in the Bundesliga, if you're a good striker, you are going to get chances, you know. Because as we know, the defending and the goalkeeping can be a little bit suspect at time of this league. And I mean, we've seen Andre Silva now. I think he's got 23 league goals this season. I mean, it's just a massive... And on top of that, the number of winners he's got and the number of big goals he's got is just incredible, you know. I mean, also a, a left back, a left wing back as well. That's another place that Dortmund is short. I mean, Philip Kostic is still only 26 years old, you know. I mean, could have side of Dortmund potentially poach him off Frankfurt, you know, because... But, I mean, obviously, I think if Frankfurt do qualify for the Champions League, they might have to wait another year for that, to be honest. But, they, for me, they're the kind of players that Dortmund should be going for, really, in the future. I think um, they're still relatively young, I think, like 25, 26, and they've got so much quality, you know. I mean, we've seen Kostic is onto around eight, nine assists, and he could have had a lot more, you know, because mm -hmm. they don't classify own goal assists to be assists, whereas that's really an assist he got from Schultz as well, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, for me, it's just a fantastic performance. It's Frankfurt have really shown what Leipzig didn't show in the game against Bayern. They've shown bottle, determination, and quality when it matters. And for me, they 100% deserve a top four place, along with Wolfsburg. They've been fantastic this season, I think. OK, so over to the other end of the table now, which was the other big game that we build this season, uh, this week. And it was indeed uh, Mainz versus Bielefeld. And yeah, I mean, it keeps it very interesting. Unlike the other one, we saw a draw in this game. And this is something that really, really keeps it tight down at the bottom. I mean, I watched this game. I was really looking forward to this game. For me, this is a game that Mainz really let get away, to be honest with you. I mean, they should have got the win there. I think Barrero missed a couple of chances at nil-nil. They eventually got the penalty, didn't they, which they tucked away really well. But then you're just looking for Mainz to... I think they missed another couple of chances as well. Barrero again at 1-0. Yeah. He didn't have his best day, the Luxembourg international, did he? And I think, um, yeah, I mean, if they get that second goal, they're looking almost safe, really, at this point. But then, you know, the last 10 minutes come along and Bielefeld, that's what they've done all season, isn't it? They've stuck in games and we see them get the reward in the last 10 minutes, Rory. That they did, yeah. Um, and I'm sure Ava, who obviously, <laughs> as we found out, was a, was a Bielefeld fan and was nervous about the game, would have been uh, thoroughly happy with the fact that Bielefeld didn't lose the game of of course um you know as the club who are you know still chasing to get out of that you know that bottom two at the moment her win would have been much more favorable but to to deny minds an extra two points and hold them in a bit for a bit longer and keep it as tight as they can do uh was incredibly important um um, it, it seems a bit in in the way that the goal arrived. It's a bit fortuitous in the fact that it's a free kick that Volkshammer hammers into the wall, and then it comes back to him perfectly to uh, to volley, and it 
seems to gather pace off the pitch the way it bounced and then went into the net. Um, so, but fair play to him for keeping his cool and, and volleying home. It was a really good finish in the end. Um, so, yeah, it didn't really change an awful lot in terms of the relegation race. Uh, obviously, we see that Cologne went down narrowly to Wolfsburg. So, in, a, in essence, it's a net gain of one point for Bielefeld, if you want to think about it positively. Um, and Mines obviously then stretched their well, lead over over Cologne in the relegation playoff place to two points. Um, so it, it's all still so condensed right now at the moment, which is extremely exciting. Uh, it's the most open race that we have in the league. Of course, the, the title race and, and the Champions League race uh, both had significant results this weekend. But the, as far as the relegation race is concerned, all four teams um, are still well you know, it's still well in the mix in terms of uh, going down automatically or being in that relegation playoff place. Um, but yeah, I think Mines again would be frustrated because it's another game where they've had a lot of chances and they've not taken them. And at the end of the day, it could be could be one where they look back at the season, and they look at all the what ifs and and all those chances that they squandered. Like you mentioned, Botius had had a good few. Uh, Good few chances, um, as well as Barrero. Um, so yeah, a missed out opportunity for Mines, and it, it remains as, as tight and exciting as ever. Yeah, I think one of the interesting points in this game, I think for me, Bielefeld will be the much happier side. First of all, because I think uh, Mainz dominated the game and they should have got the three points without doubt. But secondly, an interesting point, the way that the fixtures go is that Bielefeld have got the Friday night game at home to Freiburg coming up this next week. And if they win that, they'd actually go up above Cologne and Mainz now. So this almost looks like a free hit for them, you know. I mean, obviously, Freiburg are a quality side, but it, it is a winnable game at the end of the day for Bielefeld. And I think should they have lost that game, they would have started to lose touch a little bit with Mainz. But I mean, yeah, that game on Friday now is massive. And if they win that, then that's going to look a really, really good point uh, going into the, the weekend game, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think the other interesting point is that obviously we've seen Frank Kramer. He has changed that side up a little bit as well. I mean, for the early part of the season, it was the same 11 almost every single week. I mean, Fogel's hammer, that was one of his first starts of the season this year. He replaced Fabian Close, incredibly. I mean, obviously Close is... Uh, he's known as being their target man, but he's not enjoyed a good season this year at all, has he? And I think obviously Fogelshammer comes in. He doesn't do a lot in the game, in truth. But I mean, he gets that equaliser, fortuitous as it was. And I mean, that looks like another good, big decision from uh, Kramer, you know. So yeah, he is starting to make the big decisions that perhaps um, Uwe Neuhaus wasn't willing to do. So yeah, they are starting to see the re the reward from some of those big uh, tactical decisions from the new man. Okay, let's finally switch on to the last of the featured four games, which was. Um, yeah, it was Borussia Mönchengladbach, resurgent Borussia Mönchengladbach, I would say, <laughs> against Freiburg. Yeah, I mean, this was a really entertaining game. I think we both said, actually, we both said that either side that wins this is going to have a great chance of getting that top six. But at the same time, neither side will be, like, terribly disappointed if they don't win it. And, yeah, I think we saw a really, really entertaining game in this one. Obviously, with Freiburg taking the lead in the first half, they were looking good on that lead, really, for a period. But then that man who we've not seen enough of this season for me, especially in the second half of the season, has been Marcus Turam. But he does the business this week, Rory. That he did, yeah. And um, regrettably, I actually only saw, uh, in terms of seeing things live, the... Um, the second half of this game and um, it, it, from what I saw in terms of the highlights, Freiburg were were very impressive actually in the first half and um, Demirovic and Salai linked up a few times and, and they looked dangerous and, and Gladbach were, were in effect clinging on a little bit. Um, so the fact that they managed to get into half time, only one down, um, I think obviously was important. Sommer made a few few important um, saves and, and interceptions. Um, and there was also a bit of, um, obviously, kind of contention with a few goals that we saw uh, chalked off in the second half. But um, in relation to the second half, 
Gladbach did come out and they impressed me actually. Uh, they looked like um, a Gladbach side of, of earlier on in the season actually. Uh, they looked like they wanted to attack, getting it into Marcus Chiram, uh, who was incredibly impressive actually and led the line really well. Was a was a threat, used his pace, used his power, all the things, all his attributes that he has which if he used them in the right way he will be a fantastic striker or or winger or whatever he wants to be in in the future um so obviously yeah he gets a bit of fortune with the first goal you know a deflection off santa maria i think it is and it and it floats in for the equalizer but the second goal is is a lovely goal from a striker's point of view he's able to hold his man off his defender using his strength using his pace rounds the keeper and then is able to tap in for two one um then they think they might have killed the game. So this is where I think it start, the game started to get contentious. As much as it was a game of two halves, it was a game of two calls as well with regards to VAR. Um, one was wrong, I think, and one was right. So the first one is where um, basically an own goal is scored um, by Santa Maria. Again, actually, I think it was from Stindle Cross. However, they pulled it all the way back to what was apparently a foul from Lanier. Uh, from Liner, sorry, um, on halfway, and so I don't, I couldn't even tell what it was for at first. So when they went to the replays, I was like, uh, that doesn't seem right. It looks, if anything, like Liner has been fouled. Um, so the ref went to check it, and he's he's just you know waved it off, not not fast, and that that was a really big decision in because it could have cost Club back in the end if obviously the offside later on had gone Freiburg's favour, that would have been hugely contentious because it would have denied Gladbach two, you know, two extra points and, you know, probably deserved points in the end. It could have, a draw wouldn't have been a bad result for either side and it's probably a fair, it would have been fair that it was a draw. Um, but yeah, obviously you get you get on to later in, uh, in the game and Schlotterbeck manages to basically get the ball into the net late on, basically last kick of the game, but it's ruled out because of an offside in the build-up. Um, so, obviously, fortunately, the the uh, the technology is there to save Club back on this occasion, and it gives them a real boost. Um, they obviously use the Schalke game as a bit of a springboard, a um, bit of confidence going through that, and then this second-half performance especially will give them all sorts of confidence going into the rest of the season. Obviously, maybe they can just – they know what the situation is with Rosa – can they just sweep that under the carpet for now and just span together for this last this last stretch of games to maybe force themselves into a top six battle again? They've still got an awful lot to do, and it will mean that they need to be more consistent as well and hope that teams around them fall away. Um, but yeah, I thought it was a really good performance in the end. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as you say, I think the U the obviously they've gone a long way run without a a long run without a win before the game against uh, Schalke. But then now that's two wins in a row. Next time up, they go away to Hertha Berlin. You know, they, they think that's a chance of winning as well. They're currently four points behind Leverkusen, but of course Leverkusen are also on bad form. I mean, they got the win this week, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But overall, they're on pretty poor form, so they will see. They're not far from being favoured to get in that sixth spot at the moment, I would say. You know, I mean, the performance levels are going higher. They got the little bit of, I wouldn't say it was luck because it was a correct decision to disallow the Schlotterbeck goal, you know. But at the end of the day, that a few centimetres to the other side and all of a sudden they've shipped another last gasp equaliser, you know, and that would have been a mm -hmm. real thing for them. But yeah, I mean, we're starting to see a few players of them get back onto some form as well. So things are starting to look a little bit better in the in the Gladbach camp. But for me, this is massive for Rosa now. He needs to try and get that fifth or sixth spot to kind of retain his legacy, really, at Gladbach. Because we have we saw the period before and after Christmas where the season just collapsed, didn't it, completely, you know? And I mean, yeah, they are playing for pride more than anything. But yeah, I'd still say a Europa League spot. You've got to remember in Germany, they take Europa League pretty seriously as well. But I know that mm -hmm. in, if any of you guys are England English Premier League fans, and we don't really take the Europa League that seriously over in England. You know? But in in the Premier League in Germany, it's really quite a big deal, especially for clubs like Gladbach, Leverkusen that are regularly participating in this. So yeah, it is quite a big deal for them to get that sixth spot and into the Europa League. 
Okay, so that brings to a conclusion our feature four. Let's just have a look at the other four games that we're going to talk about today. So let's start with the Augsburg 2, Hoffenheim 1. I mean, I said during the predictions for this one, I said that I thought that this was a massive game for Augsburg more than Hoffenheim because I think a few results had gone against them the previous two weeks. They needed that one more win and they got it. You know, this was a classic Augsburg performance for me. It was a game where Hoffenheim had so many chances and they missed so many opportunities. But Augsburg, they had maybe two or three chances and they took two of them, Rory. So it was a good win for them. That it was, yeah. Um, very impressive performances from both Caligurian and Vargas uh, from, from Augsburg. They... Um, they just made the most of their chances, like you said. Um, obviously, they they kind of break early on to to get a goal up after eight minutes was quite important, I thought. Um, and then Vargas after scoring, then then creates uh, creates a goal by by sending Han kind of through on goal, and is a, he's able to uh, to hold off the defenders and 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 finish well. So with that being two 0 at half time and the the inconsistency that Hoffenheim seemed to produce on a a bi-weekly basis perhaps sometimes they throw in a good few performances in a row um just just was able to see them through um they tried to make changes at half time Hoffenheim but still gave them a bit more impetus in the second half but still it, it wasn't really enough um obviously for for a late goal from from Skov um who managed to to score a very nice volley to make it 2-1 and, and create a bit of tension towards the end. But as you mentioned, Hausberg just uh, are, are very talented at knowing when they need to win. Um, and it's another case of, of them doing this. So, yes, I, I think we uh, can very, very safely say that FC Augsburg will be in the Bundesliga next season. Obviously, they've leapfrogged Hoffenheim actually into 11th place. So, yeah, looking very pretty now. Um, and, yeah, it's an incredibly important skill to have in football, knowing when your side needs a win and having a collective team ethic and squad's uh, ability to be able to pull out the bag is, is great. So, yeah, good, good win for Augsburg and uh, always, always next week for Hoffenheim. Yeah, I mean, what always gets with, Al with Augsburg as well, 31% possession is all they have, and they very rarely have a lot more than 35% possession as well. They're very much a team that like to play on the break, but they, they, do, they are clinical, you know. When they get those chances in games, they do take them, you know. And as you say, they were two good finishes in this game. But I think if Augsburg are going to take it further forward in the future, then they've got to start to get more possession. That's the problem, you know, because I think 31% possession at home to Hoffenheim if you were Pep Guardiola, you'd be killing yourself over that, you know. <laughs> but yeah, obviously it is. Uh, they got the win, and they're going to be playing Bundesliga next year, and that was their their target at the start of the season. So, on to another two one home win actually, which was Leverkusen over Schalke. I mean, about this one, I just want to say, I mean, a few things just went again. Schalke in the, I mean, they could easily have got a point or even three in this game, but there was one man that I really wanted to kind of bring up in this game. I mean, it's classy and Huntela. Like, he looked head and shoulders above better than anyone on that pitch, I thought, in this game. I mean, the guy's, what, 36 now? He's been like a goal machine. Obviously, it's his second stint at Schalke, but I just want to say he was brilliant in this game, I thought, you know? I mean, he got the goal disallowed at 1-0, which it was a correct decision, but, I mean, he just puts himself in the right place at the right time. And then, obviously, a really nice consolation in the last five minutes as well. I mean, the game was more or less over by that point anyway, but what did you make of his performance, Rory? Um, yeah, I mean, you can't you can't teach that kind of ability to to be in the box at the right time and, and know where to be, and, and that is just, you know, class Winterler all over, really, isn't it? Um, he's, you know, scored goals across his career um, in lots of different ways, but he's all, always been a good box player. Um, uh, and obviously that that consolation goal would have would have been a pleasing sight if you're a Schalke fan. Uh, and as you mentioned, thing a few things did go against them. Um, it's a shame that obviously he didn't manage to hold on to his first goal as well or the disallowed goal. Um, so yeah, obviously a, you know a decent effort, and it, it kind of makes you think, what if 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 they had a fit Huntelaar from the moment they signed him? Mm -hmm. I mean. 
him with the with the emergence of Matthew Hoppy, um, that could have been a really interesting kind of dynamic and and maybe would have seen a few more uh, a few more chances created and a few more goals scored in crucial crucial times for Schalke. So obviously we'll have to see what happens beyond this season. Is Huntelaar willing to play um slide Bundesliga football? What sort of wages is he on? So is it just gonna be a very brief cameo for for the player in Schalke in terms of relationship? So we'll have to see uh, how that goes. In terms of Leverkusen, obviously Hannes Wolf, you know, wrong the changes, actually made six changes for his first ever team lineup. Um, so trying to mix things up a little bit, I guess. Important that Leverkusen got themselves back on the winning winning track and it'll probably be pleasing from their fans' point of view to see both um, both Alario and Schick scoring. Um, so that's obviously quite, quite important for them, seeing both their strikers who are both you know, in some good goal scoring form earlier on the season, which saw them rise to the top of the Bundesliga right before Christmas. Um, so ha- that'll hopefully be a confidence booster for them and the two strikers. So we'll have to see if they go on a run now as well. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, moving on to the third place side now, and I think I said in the predictions, I said that this is certain to be a Wolfsburg win with a clean sheet for the home side and it was indeed it wasn't the performance that they wanted though really for Wolfsburg I mean this was for me this was one of their scratchiest performances probably for a long long time that we've seen to be honest I mean especially in the first half Cologne in this game they had a lot of chances didn't they I mean the one that really got away was the one when Michael Hector hammered the um, aluminium as you say in Germany the pole <laughs> the bar, yeah and it was um yeah I mean if that was just an inch lower they'd have gone one nil ahead and I mean for me I wouldn't say Wolfsburg, even in the second half, they didn't fly out of the blocks, you know, but it was it was a yeah. decent goal that got the win through Brekalo. But I mean, I mean, it certainly wasn't a vintage Wolfsburg performance, Rory, this one. No, far from. And I think there, if you're a Wolfsburg, you would have been stupid to assume that you would have just gone, would have gone and, and saw Cologne kind of just collapse and say, you know what, you're in third place, we're going to let you win. And, you know, they took the game to... Uh, to the side um, and it was yeah it was very unlucky that obviously Hector had had that golden opportunity and and there are a few other um, good moments Gerhardt um, was was pretty dangerous and lively um, but yeah just a bit of quality in the end was enough to see Wolfsburg over the line and and as we mentioned, that kind of grit and ability to to get through games, and not play particularly well, and and not concede goals is incredibly good skill to have in in the Bundesliga, especially. Um, so the fact that Wolfsburg were able to weather the storm and get through half time, um, you know, get that you know that bullet that you know that kind of. Uh, Rollock up the arse, so to speak, from the from the gaffer at half time and, and uh, reawaken themselves a little bit. And you said they they still didn't come out amazingly in the second half, but they were able to uh, yeah to to produce that bit of quality. They of course had a few chances as well at the end. I think that was a really good save from from Timo Horn, especially in in the last minute actually from from Veghorst. So. Uh, that again is an incredibly crucial win for Wolfsburg in terms of what happened with Dortmund and Frankfurt. That I mean, that you've got to be thinking that's that's enough now for Wolfsburg um, to bring Champions League football to to their stadium next season. And hopefully, when we get fans back in, that'll be a fantastic little treat for them um, when we start the 2021-22 season. Um, but yeah, obviously, I'm lucky for Cologne. A bit more like it from them and want to see that in the in the games where they've got a more realistic chance of winning so yeah we'll see if they can produce that in in the weeks to come yeah i think obviously 11 points clear of a uh, fifth spot now i mean obviously the result went well for them they'll have been happy that dortmund lost that game but ju- just a little uh, side note with wolfsburg the next two games are frankfurt away and bayern munich at home so i mean yeah. potentially the they will probably be, I think one win out of those two games would be enough or even like two draws, to be honest with you. Even one point wouldn't be the end of the world out of those two games, you know. 
But I mean, yeah, I mean, if they do lose those two and then Dortmund win there too, then all of a sudden, yeah, they might be back in a little bit of a fight. But they are two big games upcoming and they do have a tough run in general. They still have to play Dortmund. They still have to play Leipzig. So I wouldn't say they're quite there. But I, for me, I don't have any worries over them because, as you say, they don't concede goals. They, they have a lot of good qualities for a football team. You know, they have that team spirit they don't concede goals and it's just uh, yeah they always have that goal as well at the same time mm -hmm. so the final game of the weekend was indeed uh stuttgart versus uh Werder bremen now this one for me this was a game where Werder bremen dominated the first half they had a lot of chances yeah. created a lot of half chances and then obviously the own goal in the last 10 minutes was a signal for them because i actually thought Werder played quite well rory in this game yeah, it wasn't actually a very, um, what, what we would say, vintage display from Stuttgart. They, they were quite up against it for large periods of this game. And, and as I said, Werder were, were very much considered themselves very unlucky to come away with a loss there. Um, obviously kind of dictated by um, a few half chances here and there um, early on. And obviously... As the game went on, you're kind of looking at both sides settling for a draw and and just you know taking a point each. Um, but obviously, it's the second own goal in in a couple of weeks for Verda that has, has cost them. Um, this one obviously um, coming off Augenstein'son, um, but it was kind of the usual way that Stuttgart score. So it was a Souza cross onto the head of Kalidzic, but then actually goes in off uh, Augustinson. Um, so that was fairly unlucky and, and a pretty harsh way to go down 1-0 but um, it, it's actually a, a little cheeky result that still keeps Stuttgart um, flirting around with the top six um, obviously if we consider Gladbach to be in the in the shout then obviously Stuttgart are as well um, nestled in on 39 points with Union Berlin and Gladbach and then obviously so they're just four points off Leverkusen so a bit of form, then you might see Stuttgart playing Europa League football next season. We shall have to see. Yeah, I mean, it's just been an amazing season for Stuttgart. And it? We've, I think that's the one thing that's been missing from them, though, a little bit. Those scrappy wins, because usually when they win, they play brilliant. And I mean, this is maybe even a, a stage of even further development from them that they can start to win without playing the best. Because, I mean... It's a really important result, as you say, because, I mean, that's now, I think they've won four out of the last six now with the draw, so they're on really good form. Aside yes. from that rubbing against FC Bayern a couple of weeks ago, I mean, yeah. it's been a really good... The, the finish in the same way that they started, aren't they? So, I mean, it's just been a fantastic season for Matarato Pellegrino's side, and I really, I'd like to see them go close to that top six in the next few games. Okay, so just to let you know, guys, as well, there has been a result as we've been filming as well between uh, Union Berlin hosting uh, Hertha Berlin. It finished one all, actually. It finished a one all draw. So it's another point game for Hertha, but not perhaps the result they would have wanted. No win for Union against Hertha in the Berlin derby this year and four points taken from for Hertha against Union. So... Yeah, so let, let's just finish uh, the episode by talking about the hero and zero of the week. So um, over to Rory to uh, introduce our hero. Yeah, absolutely. A um, few decent performances this weekend. Um, and one person that we touched on earlier on the show, which is uh, Marcus Turam. Uh, he had a very influential performance, uh, especially in the second half that uh, led to Gladbach. Uh, winning their game 2-1, two, two good goals, uh, one more fortuitous than the other, but his all-round play was very impressive. Uh, so, yeah, more of the same, Marcus. Um, we don't want to see you back in the zero of the week ever again. Um, let's let's keep on pressing on. And, yeah, really impressive from, from the young striker. So, absolutely hero hero of the week, well-deserved to Marcus Duran. So, uh, over to Mark to uh, introduce our, our zero of the week. Yeah, I mean, for me, this, this was a no-brainer, really. It came in the top four clash, the game that uh, Dortmund really had to win against Frankfurt. And, I mean, the last thing you want, really, is a looping cross from Kostic being headed back towards goal and over your goalkeeper into the back of the net. And that was what Nico Schultz 
was guilty of this weekend. I mean, for me, the guy isn't even close to being dormant standard, if I'm honest with you. I mean, yeah. the guy is like, I mean, he doesn't play very often. He's been brought in the last few weeks. And it, for me, he's a guy that Marco Rosa really needs to move on. I'm sorry, Nico, you know, but you're just not good enough for this kind of level. I mean, yeah, it was a horrible own goal, which got them off to the worst possible start in their biggest league game of the season. So, yeah. yeah. Definitely zero of the week has to be Nico Schultz of Dortmund. So just to finish, guys, I'm just going to do our usual stuff. So remember to check out our Twitter at Over the Bar FB so you can see anything football related. The League One show, which considers to go from strength to strength as well. Also, uh, a lot of Bundesliga related articles. Every We've got more and more shows going out every week on the Bundesliga show. So remember to check the Spider Bundesliga show which, with our fantastic guests, Matthew and Ava, which we really enjoyed doing. Also, check out our derbies as well. We've just had the Berlin derby this weekend as well. Check that out. The Revier derby, the Sud derby between Stuttgart and Bayern. Check all of them out. We've got a lot of history and interesting facts on there. And remember to check out our otbfootball.net, which is the centerpiece of our work. So, yeah, it's been another great weekend, a very telling weekend of Bundesliga action. So we'll see you again for the product, uh, the prediction show for week 28 later in the week. So. Cheers, all.